So thinking about the product, so this is a ketone, this is an aldehyde. From the same starting alkyne, we can make either of these. We can make either of these. Now, there's only one method to make the aldehyde, but there's actually two methods to make the ketone. So the aldehyde can be made, right? It takes two steps, and that's with BH3, and step two is H2O2, NaOH. So you need to know the first step, just like you did before. This gives you that anti-Markovnikov, right? So the OH, after the second step, ends on here, and then you do a tautomerization to get to the aldehyde. So, right, you can always remember aldehydes have to come from boron because that's the only anti-Markovnikov, the only way to get them a less substituted carbon. Right, so if we number our carbons, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or the oxygen ends up to less substitute, so it has to be through BH3. Now, to make a ketone, there's actually two ways. There's the Hg2 plus catalyst in H2SO4, and usually there's water floating around, or you could just use H plus in water to do this as well. And usually H plus can come from HCl, you know, HBr, any of those kind of things. And that'll also get you to a ketone. Different mechanisms, right? This one involves a three-membered ring. This one involves carbocations, right? This one doesn't, but it still gets you to the same uh, ketone. So those are, the two, those are the two ways to make a ketone from a terminal alkyne. And here's the one way to make an aldehyde, aldehyde from a terminal alkyne. So, so I put HCl and HBr here because, right, H plus, you could say it's just H plus, or I could say it's HCl and HBr, but see the water is the solvent. So even if it's HCl, you'd have Cl minus, but because water is the polar product solvent, it's gonna react before Cl minus does or Br minus does. So I'm just putting this as possible examples of what could also be there. 